Today, let's talk about how training Kali Eskrima has affected how I teach karate. Hey, what's up? I'm Ken. This is Kenfu TV, and each week I release videos in the martial arts, philosophy, technique, training, that sort of thing. So if that's the kind of thing you're into, I hope you stick around. I hope you subscribe, hit that bell so you know when new videos come out. Jump down in the comments and have a conversation. And if this video has value for you, share it. Share it with somebody you think might like it. But before we jump into today's video, let's do shirts and patches. This patch was sent over when I joined the World Combat Association. It is, as you would expect, the World Combat Association patch. There's a video right here you can check out to see my thoughts on why I joined the World Combat Association, what it means to me, and what I hope to gain from being a part of that organization. So this one's pretty exciting. They sent a couple for my gi. One of them is gonna join the studio wall. When it comes to shirts, today I'm wearing one of mine. Link below, there's been a lot of interest in this shirt. This and the t-shirt variety are linked down below so that you can pick one up if you're interested in that. But I mostly wanna talk about this center piece. I've talked in a previous video about what this is all about. For all intents and purposes, this is my Ken Fu symbol. I've got the, the whole Ken Fu logo. Ah. But then this is the symbol that kind of represents the art in, in my way. I've got the, the Enzo I've talked about before has a, has a strength for me. In the center, I've got Karate, Kali, and Jiu Jitsu, because those are the three arts that make up who I am and what I do. There have been a lot of comments, a lot of comments about the, the center symbol, the, the characters here, the Alibata, the, the Babayan, that stands for Kali. Because when it comes to the language, it's an old language, it's an ancient language. And there was a time when it did not have things that denoted different types of vowel sounds, which made it really hard for non-native speakers to understand how the language worked and to read it properly. So this does say Kali in the old way, which in the art that I practice, if you read Mark Wiley's book, it's considered the, the art that I do is considered the ancient arts. So the, so it is, is it appropriate for it to be the older version of the language to say Kali. There's a newer version. There have been adjustments made to the language, the written language to allow for that, for those vowel sounds. And that's why you get this center, you'll have a center dot here or a, it's kind of a little circle that represents the vowel sound to make it a Kali instead of Kala. So in the newer format, this means Kala and not Kali. You go back and it was contextual. The, the context of the words told you what it meant. So anyway, because of that, because it's the, the old way, that's the way the shirt is built for me. But I, I wanted to be able to include people who wanted it. So I've also released a version that has the newer phonetic setup that includes the, the symbol that makes it Kali in the newer by Bayan Nui Alibata. And I say newer, I mean, this is still a long time ago. Real quick, Ken the editor wants to drop in. I totally forgot to mention, if you want your shirts, your patches to be featured in this segment, and I hope that you do, and I hope that you send a story about what it means to you or what the background is and all of that kind of thing, you can hit shirts and patches at KenFu.com TV and I'll get you all the information you need to get it sent over and I'll get it featured on this show. Okay, back to the show. Anyway, both of those linked down below. Kenfu shirt. I hope you like it. Let's jump back into today's video. Okay, so today talking about Kali Eskrima and how it affects my karate and especially the way that I teach karate. I can only speak about the, the Eskrima that I've practiced. I specifically study and teach Tobosa's Kali Eskrima. There are others, there are others that I've practiced. I've practiced Modern Anise and, and Piki Tersha. I had a chance to train with Inosantos to see a little bit of his flavor on Kali, as well as Balintawak with Fergus Fausto at Kota Combative, so you gotta check that channel out. But the art that is my, my root, the thing that I practice the most is Tobosa Kali Eskrima. So when it comes to referencing how the training works, this might not be completely accurate to the way everybody trains. It just is accurate to the way that I train. The thing that stood out to me, the thing that I've been thinking about a lot lately, and it's funny how when you train, especially when you train multiple things, you don't always recognize the things that are changing in you and the way that you do things. So you gotta spend time reflecting. I think reflection is really important. That reflection has allowed me to become aware of some things that I really like about the Eskrima training and the way that it's done. It's interesting because when we call out drills, they have such long, elaborate names. Might say something like, para porma para cincoteros, pica la ganga vante, numerada. There might also be equally long things like, sagang sagawas para dos iteros, la gamano kalakang avante y literada numerada. And it just sounds like so much, but it's very specific. 
let's break down the first one. First one was para porma para cinco teros, vica la gang avante numerada. Para porma, para porma, the, the, the stopping positions. And they represent where the stick comes from, where the stick goes to. And so those are the, the motions. So you're training the parada of the cinco teros, the five strikes, the five angles. In our case, a forehand diagonal, backhand diagonal, forehand horizontal, backhand horizontal, and a thrusting angle. So it's starting off with what are your hands doing? Then what are your feet doing? V calacang avante, which is just a V stepping, stepping out in a V shape. The avante means that I'm advancing versus like the second one I do is literata. That's that retreating, sometimes literata. And the numerata, I mean by the numbers. So I've said, what are you doing with your hands? Similarly, what are you doing with your feet? And I've also commissioned you to wait for my command before you move to the next thing. That varies and changes all over the place depending on the drill that we're doing because it's literally just defining in order, what are you doing? The thing that I love about this, the thing that has become really interesting to me is we do all of the things, all of the ways. So I'll do para porma para cinco teros with the V Kalakong forward stepping, V Kalakong reverse stepping, Usu Kalakong a single stepping, the Lima Kalakong, there's, there's many different ways, so all the different footworks. So doing all the paradas to all the footworks in all the directions, and then doing maybe all the tieros, all the strikes in all of the footworks in all of the directions. And you see how it builds, and it's just all these permutations. It's these variables that are multiplied against each other to create all of these variables, all of these variations. And that's a thing that I don't think that we always do. It's certainly not a thing that I always did. It's what if, what if I take my karate and I work my striking off of my lead hand, work my striking off of my rear hand, work my striking off of my circling footwork, work of my striking off of my linear or lateral footwork, making sure that I've had an opportunity to see how that that particular striking is feeling in all of the different footworks, becoming accustomed and familiar so that in the heat of it, when something needs to change, it's not new. I'm, I'm familiar with it, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's not something that gets drilled as heavily as something else, having all of those permutations, doing it in all of those ways, breeds an intimate familiarity with the technique. Yeah, it feels different when my weight's shifted back. It feels different when my weight is shifted forward. It feels different when I'm moving side to side. It feels different when I'm circling. It feels different. And so you establish a 360 degree understanding of the motion that you're doing. I believe this can be really helpful to all training. Can I, can I kick while advancing? Can I kick while retreating? Can I punch while retreating? Can I do this throw stepping in this way? Some things are not gonna, going to translate as well throws are a good example, stepping back to do a throw when one of the critical things about that throw is getting up underneath someone might not be it. But if you can move back in a way that loads them onto you, maybe it is it, maybe it is better. So training this way has showed me how to not become static in the way that I approach particular things where they're always approached the exact same way every single time. There is priority, there's preference, there is a weightedness to the list so that things that are more likely, things that are have a higher success rate are practiced more frequently, but time is spent establishing that familiarity. As I continue to rebuild my curriculum, because one of the things that I'm working on is, is a World Combat Association approved syllabus. As I continue to work on that, one of the things that I'm doing is incorporating this idea, this mentality of having this approach to the karate techniques and the karate methodology, then making sure that the, the fighting is dynamic and has flavor from all different types of footwork and movement. And when you look at it this way, you realize that sometimes you can do a lot of cross training inside of your own art because you're just training things a different way than you have been. You don't have to go to another art to cross train that. You can stay in your own art and still cross train things that maybe you haven't trained yet. So explore it, explore your art and see what you come up with. So now let's jump into comments from last week. All right, so last week we did, are you a bully? And this one had an overwhelming response in a good way, in a really positive way, because this is maybe things that we don't always talk about, things that we need to hear sometimes. So let's look at what you guys had to say last week. Karate in real life says, again, such an authentic message. 
Thanks for acknowledging the critical voice we all hear too often in our own head and the solution to just stop. It might be hard to simply stop, but living each moment is a good start. Can you be kind to yourself in this moment? And then bringing those moments closer together and having them happen more often. You're absolutely right. I wanna highlight two things on that because one of them is you're right, just stopping is not easy. In fact, starting is the, is the actual thing you need to do. You need to start having that positive self-talk, making sure that you're hearing those positive things. And I, and I realized after I edited the video that I did not include enough of that, enough discussion about that, but it was in there and you guys caught it and that's what's important. And what you said, this whole idea of being kind to yourself in this moment and then bringing those moments closer together, not just can you be kind right now, can you continue to bring those moments closer together to where it's just, a thing you do. It's, it's an all the time thing. That's what needs to happen. It's not what will just easily happen. That's not how that works, but it's something we can try for. And I love how you put it. Salvatore Placido Pomares says, I want to say thank you from my heart. Since I haven't been doing martial arts for over 21 years, and I have been confronted with overweight, arrogant doctors and would-be athletes with negative attitudes who keep telling me you can't do it or give up. You're too fat for karate. You really spoke to me from the heart. I will no longer be discouraged and humiliated. It is good that I have very good positive friends and a loving wife who believe in my project Health Karate and who are now participating. Thank you for encouraging words. I'm glad to do it. And I'm glad to see that you're doing it, that you're taking charge of your own stuff and you're getting out there and getting it. And the idea of Health Karate, I love it. I love it. Karate for mental health, karate for physical health, karate for life. Gary Higgs, hurt people, hurt people. That about sums it up. It's all too true. And it's sad that it's true, but it is. People who are hurt, reach out and do the hurting. Sir James Gray says, I was bullied as a kid both physically and emotionally. I was short with a big nose, making me an easy target. I was brownish. I looked Middle Eastern, Scottish father, Japanese mother, making me different looking for most of the kids and my parents dressed me funny, like Steve Urkel. Love it. Anyway, that was the reason I started karate. After a year or so, I became the bully. I began to bully the bullies in school and I loved it because hurt people hurt people. That is so true. That part of my past was shameful and I regret it. However, dealing with all of that made me who I am today, so at least something good came out of that. Something absolutely good came out of that. I don't believe that people who never do bad things are the best kind of people. I believe the people who have come from doing bad things, thinking bad things, saying bad things, and realizing the impact of that and taking control of it are the people who understand it the best. To say it a different way, I talk to parents and they go, yeah, but teaching kids karate, that's gonna teach them how to be violent. And I say to them, one of the things that's the most impressive to me is how when a kid learns martial arts and he learns what it feels like, he becomes a person who doesn't want to do that to other people. I'm going to forget the movie, you know, but the guy gets shot. He's been shooting people through the whole movie and then he gets shot. And he's like, oh my God, this is what this feels like. This is awful. And I laugh because that's, I think that's what it's like. I think that's what it's like when you have karate or a physical training and, you, and you're training and you're working with each other. So you've got to take some and give some. You gain an appreciation for what that stuff does and then you can learn a measure of control into when it gets used. Not everybody does it right away, but, but the people who come from that and change like you did, that's a huge deal. And it makes for the most powerful of the good in people. Step Gamer Dad says, my stepkid has problems with self-confidence. They always say they can't do it before trying something challenging. Currently, they have to read a 90 page chapter book within a week. A bit much for a fourth grader, in my opinion, but that's beside the point. I gave them a talk about that I know they can do it and I will help them prove me right. Two days in and they're already halfway through. Makes me really proud to see them overcome these obstacles like that. Yeah, can't is such a bad word. Henry Ford said, whether you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. It starts here. It's gotta start here. So I love it. I love what you're doing. Keep it up. And Mary Schleika says, I just need you to hear that today. Thank you. And I've got comments like that from Facebook and things like that too. And I'm very, I don't even know. I don't even know the right emotion to feel. I'm, I'm so excited and happy that people are hearing this message and, it, and it's reaching them. Sometimes it's even things that we already know, but we just don't necessarily want to address that for ourselves. And so to hear that, that this is helping, that it's shaking people out of that a little bit, even just a little bit, is worth a lot to me. So I really appreciate that, you guys. I really appreciate you reaching out and telling me that you heard this. And, he, and for even for a moment, you, you looked at yourself differently. I appreciate you, and I can't wait to do this again next week. Let's go.
Okay, and we're back. Time to finish this video up. I hope this has been helpful. I hope that it is useful to you. If it is, hit those comments. We'll talk about those. The comments, questions, things that you have, we'll talk about those next week. In the meantime, if you like what I'm doing, if you like the kind of videos that I'm putting out, you can subscribe right here. You can also see a playlist of these videos right here, and then a couple particular ones you might like right here. I'm Ken. This is Kenfu TV, and I'll catch you in the next one.